standardized holy books that have stood the test of time, no matter what religious background they are from, are so valuable because they remain a fixed statement, a perfect reference. Standardized holy books like the Yoga Sutras or the Hatha Yoga Pradipika. They are like pronouncements from a deity or a saint, capturing the claim, the formula, and immortalizing it in book form. Our yoga holy books tell us what has been saved of the ancient yogi scribes' masterful writings on the subjects. They are an intricate scaffolding through which we receive instruction in its most concise form, stated in the flow of the language of the time. However, due to a general lack of insight, most of us are unable to elaborate much on the instruction given in the holy book we sometimes become too sure of our own limited interpretation of things, or we fumble around with it, turn it around in our blockheads with an underlying fear of misinterpreting or reinterpreting or being perceived as just not getting it. Hence the need for an expert interpreter a guru commentator on the instruction given from the holy book. The deity figure who wrote the original book or inspired the original thought shouts out the command in the form of the verses that we read. The guru in between myself and the deity figure receives the same verse but knows through application, through experience, what it means intimately and shouts over to me, what he means is this. Honest gurus are merciful to help us with these holy books. And lucky for students, there is a pleasure in teaching, meaning that we're lucky that teachers love to teach. Gurus provide a fast track to understanding. They save our brains from the drudgery of trying to make sense of the statements in the books. And some minds may never be able to make sense of the statements in the books. They need that guru, that enlightened figure, to sort of turn the light on in their own head. So, in terms of the Yoga Sutras, translated and commented on by Michael Beloved, between the pages of 55 and 77, we find ourselves sitting with the guru who speaks our language. This section of the book, to me, states what the guru would say to you to get you to understand what the deity or saint is saying. In part two of this book of the Yoga Sutras, each verse is said to you again, not changed, but stated in a way that can possibly penetrate the psyche of the person living today. Because sometimes the language that is used in those holy books is an archaic language, and it's not familiar to us, and we have a hard time deciphering and discerning it. So a guru, a real living guru, can bring this light and this insight upon these holy books for the students to learn and to help us make progress spiritually. I rely on this section of the book of the Yoga Sutras and it has helped my comprehension every step of the way. Most of what Patanjali said, no matter how well stated in easy to understand language with elaboration, is beyond the interest or ability of most people, it would seem. So the verse that I have been using for my own benefit, as well as offering to my students before the beginning of an exercise session, is on page 58 of those Yoga Sutras, chapter 1, verse 34, which reads this. That abstract meditation may be caused by practicing a method of breath manipulation 
wherein the vital energy of the gross and subtle body is enhanced, causing the creative urges to subside so that the higher nature is experienced. I'm going to read it one more time, okay? Because this sums up what we are doing as we approach our exercise session, our asana, pranayama, pratyahara, that's going to lead us into our dharana, dhyana, and samadhi practice. That abstract meditation, that's what we're after, that abstract meditation, may be caused by practicing a method of breath manipulation wherein the vital energy of the gross and subtle body is enhanced, causing the creative urges to subside so that the higher self can be experienced. So the creative urges are those vrittis, the thinking, the imagining, the remembering, the perceiving stuff, the activities of the mind, the fluctuations of the mind, those subside because of what? Because of breath infusion, breath manipulation, and an enhancement, because of the breath manipulation, an enhancement of the gross and subtle body which causes those creative urges to subside and the higher self to be experienced. This verse sums up what we are in for at the start of a yoga session. The goal is the meditation at the end, and that is said up front in this translation. He points to breath manipulation as the cause of this meditation. The breath manipulation is the cause of the meditation. During the breath manipulation, the bodies, the bodies, gross and subtle, are enhanced. Enhancement causes a decrease in one's desirous nature. At that point, when this is done, the higher nature is perceived. That's a good session from start to finish. I encourage myself and my students to make much effort to detect what the translator in this verse calls enhancements. What do those enhancements feel like during your session, during your exercises, your stretches and your breathing? How do you sense out those enhancements? Feel them, pay attention to them, work with them. Where are those enhancements located? What effect do they have overall? And what parts have I enhanced and what parts are left to be enhanced? That's the ultimate question during our exercise session as we move along through it, is what is not done yet? what part of my subtle body needs to be enhanced through the stretching and the breath manipulation. So I just want to reiterate that this particular translation commentary of the Yoga Sutras by Michael Beloved is particularly useful if you really want to understand yoga because of his part two where he states to you like a guru would state to you each and every verse of the Yoga Sutras. There's no confusion. There's no archaic language or archaic sentence structure. He gives it to you in a sentence structure we understand, in language that we understand, but there's no changing what Patanjali is saying and what he means. So this is an invaluable gift, really, to humanity that this part of the Yoga Sutras, that this translation of the Yoga Sutras um, exists. And I encourage anybody that's interested to give it a try. If you have picked up the Yoga Sutras before and you have not been able to make heads or tails of it, get this book, read part two, go through it slowly, academically, and see what you think. I'll leave a link 
in the description for the book. Have a wonderful day. See you later.